Hi guys and welcome back to Froggy Day Crochet. Today we are working on a tutorial for this beautiful bath mat. This is done in the basket weave stitch. I'll bring that a little closer so that you can see it. In the next clip I tell you what materials that you will need but on this part of the introduction I will actually go through the specifics. So you are going to need four balls of cotton. What I used for this demonstration was sugar and cream and it is a 56.7 gram or two ounce ball. You're going to need four of these. Two in one color and two in another. You are also going to need a seven millimeter crochet hook. Now you are going to be holding two strands of this cotton yarn together at the same time depending on how loose or tight you crochet you may want to get an extra ball of each color to be on the safe side because I literally had only this much left <laughs> out of my bright color for my contrasting color which was white I actually had a large ball <clears throat> So I'm sure I would have just the same amount of white left if I was using the two smaller ones. Okay, so without further ado, let's go ahead and get started and I hope you guys enjoy this tutorial. Hi guys. Okay, so we are going to go ahead and get started on our bath mat. I am using two strands of yarn, cotton yarn, held together. Um, just a plain white cotton and then I'm also going to be using this color. It is called Playtime. This is a sugar and cream um, and it has the colors of the yellow, orange, and pink and a little bit of red in there. Um, <clears throat> I'm also going to be using a seven millimeter crochet hook. Okay, I did want to mention that if you're using a bright color such as this or a red, that this color does have the tendency to bleed when you're using it with a white. So, I would suggest if you, especially if you're making this as a gift for someone, that once you have finished you soak it in water, just rinse it really well, and then add some vinegar and soak it in a vinegar bath, and that will stop the colors from bleeding. Okie dokie. So, we are going to go ahead and get started. Okay, for this pattern, there is a stitch multiple of eight plus one. You can do yours in any size that you like, but if you would like to follow me, I have chained 41. So again, that's a stitch multiple of eight plus one. And what we're going to do is we are going to start by doing a half double crochet into the second chain from the hook. So I like to use these back bumps. So this would be the first bump and this would be the second bump. So we're going to half double crochet into each of those bumps, back bumps all the way across. Being careful not to lose that second strand of yarn since we're holding two together. So, just make sure that you get all your stitches in there 
so that way your project doesn't unravel. So continue to <clears throat> put one half double crochet in each chain all the way across and then that will finish your foundation row and we will start our pattern stitch. Okay, so at this point we have finished row one or what I call our foundation row. If, like I said, if you are following my stitch count, you will have 40 half double crochet and that does include our turning chain from the beginning. So at this point we are going to chain three being careful to make sure that we have all of our stitches on our hook because we are working with two strands of yarn. Now what we're going to do is we're going to skip this first stitch right here and we are going to work a front post double crochet around the next stitch. So, let me zoom in a little bit so you can see this. You yarn over, you put your hook in between the next stitch, so in between your first stitch and the next stitch that you're working on. <clears throat> bring it in through the back and then bring it back in so that that post is sitting in front of your hook. You're going to yarn over and pull that through that post. So you now have your three stitches on your hook. You're going to yarn over and pull through two, yarn over and pull through two. Now this beginning row is going to look kind of wonky. That's because you don't really have anything down here established yet. So if it looks kind of crazy, it's okay. It's completely normal. So we're going to do another one. Again, you want to bring your hook in so that the post is on the front side of your hook. You're going to yarn over and pull through. So you have three loops now on your hook. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over and pull through two. Okay, so we have our first two front post double crochets. Now we're going to work on our back post double crochets. So with the back post double crochet you yarn over and basically you're doing the same thing except for you come in through the back and go around. So now your post is on the back side of your hook. You're going to yarn over and the first ones are sometimes tricky like I said because you have nothing established so you yarn over you pull through with your three loops on the hook yarn over pull through two yarn over and pull through two so that is your back post double crochet so we're going to do that again for the stitch pattern And now from here we are just going to alternate all the way across. So we have two front posts, two back posts. We're going to do two front posts, two back posts, two front posts, two back posts, and so on all the way until the end. And I'll show you what it looks like at the end of row one. Okay, so we have worked all the way across our row with our first row of our stitch pattern. And if you're following my multiples, you will end with your set of two front double post crochets. Well, this is where it gets a little tricky because you'll have a tendency to want to double crochet into this chain right here from your half double crochet. 
that is actually part of your front post double crochet that you have skipped. So what we are going to do is just double crochet into the top of our chain stitch. Right there at the end. And that finishes row one. For row two, we are going to chain three. <clears throat> so at this point, if you want to, you can put a stitch marker somewhere on this side to represent the right side of your project. So that way you will know when the stitch pattern alternates. Completely up to you. So we've chained three and we're gonna turn. We're going to skip this first stitch. We're not gonna do anything in it because this is our double crochet. Now we are going to back post double crochet. So we're following the exact stitch pattern on this row that was already established. So we have our first two back post double crochets. So our next stitch from the row previously was a front post on this side of the work. So we are going to front post double crochet around those two. Our next two stitches on this side of the work are back post. So we will also do two back post double crochets. Again, making sure that you are getting all your strands of yarn. Okay, so continue to follow that sequence all the way across. You're going to front post double crochet in the front post and you're going to back post double crochet into the back post. And we will meet you at the end of the row. We are, have come to the end of our row two stitch pattern. And we are just going to pop a double crochet right there into the top of that turning chain. Again, making sure that you're getting through all of your stitches. And there we go. We have completed our second row. So you should have something that kind of looks like this. Now this is where the fun part starts. So this is our back side. We're going to chain three. We're going to turn our work and now we're on the front side. So this is why I said if you wanted to use a stitch marker to mark your right side rows, that was perfectly fine. Because now we are going to start doing the opposite. And this is what makes the basket weave part come in. So on this row, we already have our row below of our two front post double crochets. But on this time, instead, we are going to start with two back post double crochets. And what that does is it changes the way the stitches look. And sometimes it's kind of hard to see when you first, when you do your first row of your new alternating pattern. But once you have several different repeats of the of these four rows, you'll definitely see what I'm talking about. So our next set of stitches were back post double crochets, but now we're going to change those into front post double crochets. So we work two front post double crochets there. Pull out some more yarn because it's getting a little tight there. 
and because of that I didn't get my stitch in correctly. So you always want to make sure that you have lots of yarn pulled out so that way you can keep your tension the same. Okay, so we come to our next set of stitches and because they were front posts on the previous row, we know these are going to be back post double crochets. So two back post double crochets in the next set of two. Our next set of two were back posts on the previous row. So we know these two are going to be front post double crochets. And now we're next to now we're at our next set. These were front posts on the previous row. So now they will be back post double crochets. So at this point, continue to follow that sequence all the way across and we'll meet back at the end. We're back to the end and we have double crocheted into the top of our turning chain. Now we are going to chain three and we are going to turn again. And on this row, we will be following our new stitch pattern. So basically, if you remember, on the right side row, we are going to invert every stitch. And on the back side row, we follow every stitch. You will never lose count of where you are. So on the fourth row of our stitch pattern, we have chain three and turn. And we are going to simply follow every stitch that has already been established. So we are going to front post double crochet around the front posts and back post double crochets around the back posts. Easy peasy, right? So we have done front posts around the front posts and we're doing back posts around the back posts all the way across. Again, making sure that you are working with the, both the strands and not dropping one. So we're just going to continue to do that all the way across the row. And I'm sure by now that you have learned the stitch pattern. And once you get another set of four repeat rows finished, <clears throat> you'll be able to see the way it changes and how awesome it looks. I know it's kind of hard to see on camera with this yarn, so let me bring it forward a little bit. You can start to see the little basket weave change right there. Let me take my hook out so you can see this a little better. Okay, so right here, you know, we have our front posts and we have our back posts. So, and then opposite on this side. So it's looking like a weaved basket. Isn't that neat? I really love the way this stitch pattern works out. Okay, so just continue to follow the same set, the same sequence of stitches all the way across by doing front posts in the front post, back post into the back post. And when you get to the end of the row, we will meet up again. Okay, so we have finished that row, 
we have double crocheted into the top of our turning chain we have chain three and now we are going to turn our work so now we are on the front side again so what do we do you guessed it we invert our stitches so this time since we already have two back post double crochets we know now that we are going to work to front post double crochets <clears throat> so to front post double crochets into the first set of two and now we're going to work a back post double crochet around each of those next front post double crochets again making sure that you're getting through all those strands our next set will be our front post doubles okay so at this point we are just going to continue this stitch pattern we are going we're on the front side so we're going to work back post into the front post front post into the back post when we turn to the wrong side we're going to follow the same sequence so continue to do this back and forth rewind the video if you need to and when we are at the end I will give you a few options of what you can do at this point you can make this as long or as short as you like you can use it the length this way or you can use it this way long ways measuring on your floor how wherever you're going to put it um, so yeah continue to work that for a while until you have established the length and width that you would like and then we'll meet up again I also wanted to take a quick break and mention that when you are working with double strands don't hesitate to take some time and you know stretch your fingers out help them relax I know that when I'm working with double strands I have the tendency to forget that because I'm not it's something that I don't normally do you know working with the double strands so you always want to take a minute and just you know kind of relax your hands out um, stretch them do whatever you got to do that is completely okay Okay, so at this point I have completed 22 rows and this is what my bath mat looks like now this is the perfect size for me you can continue to make yours larger if you like or you can make it smaller once you have finished you have a couple options of what you can do you can either fasten it off and weave in your ends or at this point you can put a border on it I'm not gonna put a border on it because I like the way mine is but if you choose to do a border what you can do is chain one and turn your work put two single crochet into the first stitch single crochet all the way across the top when you get to your next corner put three single crochet then evenly single crochet down the side when you get to the next corner work three single crochet single crochet across the bottom to the next corner three single crochet in that corner then evenly single crochet across the opposite side when you get back to the top do one single crochet and then join with into the first 
stitch. So there you have it. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. I want to take this time to thank everybody for watching. Thank you for all your support. Don't forget to hit the like button below and hit that subscribe button and hit the bell button so you know each time we have new videos uploaded. Again, thanks for watching guys and stay froggy.